Okay, thanks. There's the uh, title. Now, um, Okay, I just want to give you a little bit of a background to prisons, and um, this pretty much carries in every country. Um, prison settings have characteristics that can increase HIV transmission. There are elevated levels of HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, TB, and mental illness. There's widespread risk behaviour and few prevention and treatment measures, as we'll see. And I would suggest that unless HIV is controlled in the prison setting, it may be hard to control in the community. Yet prisons are a practical point for HIV prevention and treatment. So drug dependency is the main reason why prison systems are growing, prison populations are growing. And for example, I just want to use the US, when the population increased in the community by 13%, the prison population went up by 33%. And people who inject drugs in prison increased by 43%. So you can see the concentration of drug injectors going to prison. And an interesting statistic from America, a third of the 200,000 heroin users are imprisoned annually in the US. And another study by Andrew Ball, 60% of people who inject drugs in a 12-city study had been in prison. So it's a very common event for people who inject drugs. And from our own work in Australia, we found incredibly high reincarceration rates among people who inject drugs. 84% uh, of people who injected drugs were reincarcerated within two years of release versus 44% of all prisoners, and we've got a lot of um, programs to stop people going to prison. And they had a mean of five imprisonments. So they're not just going, they're going often. So the aim of this talk is to present a systematic global review we carried out for the UNODC. We looked at imprisonment rates, HIV prevalence, HIV incidence, AIDS-related mortality, and services provided in prison in relation to HIV. Uh, and the time period under this observation was 2008 to 2013. So it was a multilingual review. We also um, surveyed UN staff and experts. We got the list of countries from the UN AIDS and we got imprisonment rates from the prison, um, International Centre for Prison Studies. We identified over 12,000 documents and in this talk I'm going to use 260 of those. Some of the um, basic stats we found was about 10 million people are in prison today and 3 million are on pre-trial remand, so they haven't been sentenced. But an estimated 30 million people enter and leave prison each year, which is an incredible figure, and 90% of those are male. The world average rate of incarceration was 144 per 100,000 adult population. So here's imprisonment rates for each region. Uh, first um, column with data is the number of countries in each region, and then the second one is the imprisonment rate. And if you look at the bottom, as I said, it's 144 on average. So you can see which, country, which regions have higher than average. So East, Southern Africa has 182. The Caribbean, 332. Latin America, 210, all higher than the average for the world with the other ones having lower. Now this was surprising. Um, I think the uh, interest in prison has waned and, and the forgotten epidemic is an apt title. There are few studies on HIV prevalence and incidence in the world these days. If you go down the all column, you can see this. we only identified 58 data points on HIV prevalence in prisons for that time period in the world. Of those, 28 referred to male prisoners and 26 referred to female prisoners. Just nine studies referred to drug injectors and three to MSM. And I think we found one study on transgender prisoners. So the um, emphasis on prisons and HIV has definitely waned. Here's the range of the prevalence we found. Uh, I'll just take you through the first line or so. Uh, so East, Southern Africa, for men, 
the range of HIV prevalence was from 0 to 50 per cent. For women, it was from 2 to 75 per cent. So you can see there's quite a lot of <laughs> infection for the women. And overall, for prison samples where they didn't identify the gender, it was 6 to 33 per cent. So you can have a look at your own um, region there if you like. I've got to get on. Uh, there is the prevalence for each country in the region, and um, I'm just picking on South, Eastern Southern Africa because it's the first one. You can see Malawi, 41%, Swaziland, 75%, Zambia, 42%. These are incredible figures. Western Central Africa, um, a few countries there have very high rates. Ghana and uh, Ivory Coast. Prevalence in Asia, um, Australia, we're virtually zero in prison. Um, we have like 20 HIV positive people out of 10,000. But Indonesia, you can see quite high, China quite high. Just one study was located in the Caribbean, and that was 4%. Uh, Eastern Europe, um, much higher again. So Estonia, uh, the stands can be high, Lithuania. Latin America, Brazil, 10%, Mexico, 12%. The Middle East, and I'd like to single out this region because I think there's a lot of chance for intervention here, a lot of um, potential for transmission here that hasn't apparently happened yet. Uh, other countries, which is predominantly Europe, seem to have moderate levels. I just want to talk a little bit about outbreaks that have been noticed in prison. Thailand had a huge outbreak that really got their HIV epidemic going among the injectors. Lithuania had an outbreak where 300 inmates were infected in six months, and this doubled the number of cases in the whole country. Russia had an outbreak where 400 inmates were infected in a matter of months. Iran had two outbreaks. Um, the numbers infected have never really been released, but it did spur Iran on to do a lot of HIV prevention in prisons, including 40,000 people on methadone and needle and syringe programs. Australia, we had a little outbreak. Uh, Scotland had an outbreak. Afghanistan has had a number of people infected in prison. Now, as part of the review, we also asked for uh, and looked for incident data. So here I've got um, the first three columns of data are incidents, so it's the rate of infection. So for Mozambique, 0.2% of prisoners were getting infected among males and a similar figure among females. The final column for um, Kazakhstan, 77 cases were identified in 2008, 75 in 2009 and 43 in 2010. Uh, more um, HIV incidents, the same deal, three columns of incidents, and there we have Spain with a declining incidence. S Spain has done a lot of programming in HIV prevention in prison, as has Portugal. And on the right column you can see number of cases, so Moldova, 12, Russia, 229, Ukraine, I mean, incredible figures from Ukraine, 900 people infected in one year, up to 3,000 people. And Afghanistan, a small number. This was the data for AIDS-related mortality in prison, which was incredible. Um, again, a rate and then number of cases. So 12% in um, 2009 in Moldova died from HIV in prison or an AIDS-related illness. Romania, three people died in 2008 in prison. And Ukraine, you can see an incredible number of people dying from HIV-related illness in prison. Now, I want to move quickly on to um, prevention programs. And uh, this is based on the UNODC 15 um, interventions, a comprehensive package that they released last year. And this is the first half of the package. So again, across the top, we've got the number of countries, 20 countries in East Southern Africa of which 12 countries had one, at least, HIV prevention or related program. So I'll go down the um, programs, voluntary counselling and testing, information education and communication, HIV care and treatment, just nine countries had that, and if you remember the HIV prevalence in that region was quite high. 
prevent, treat hepatitis uh, C, that was four countries, OST one country, and STI treatment and care, five countries. And again, the second half of the intervention package, so condoms, two countries in uh, East and Southern Africa out of 20 countries have condoms for prisoners. If you go along the condom line, no countries in West and Central Africa have condoms. Four countries in the Asia Pacific region out of 35 have condoms. No prisons in the Caribbean have condoms. Six in Eastern Europe, six countries have condoms. Seven in Latin America, one out of 21 in the Middle East, North African region has condoms. And five in the other countries region. And at the end is the total number. 25 countries out of 196 have condoms for prisoners. So you can see it's quite a low level of implementation. Uh, staff transmission, that's programs to do with occupational health and safety, uh, PMTCT. Prevention of mother to child transmission. Uh, the next one's medical or dental, so some kind of uh, attention to medical and dental transmission, the prevention of that. Needle and syringe programs, if you go right across 12 countries have that in the world in prison. PEP, uh, some programs to prevent sexual violence and finally some programs to address skin transmission such as tattooing or piercing. And you can see three countries in the world have that. I'm gonna hurry. So finally I just wanna conclude uh, that good prisoner health is actually good public health. If you remember I said 30 million people are going through these systems each year. Um, high imprisonment rates in some regions, and they should look at some form of non-custodial sentences. Very few data on prevalence, incidence and mortality. Still low prevalence in Latin America and uh, the MENARA region, with lots of time to intervene. I would suggest we increase ARV, given the high level of HIV prevalence, followed by OST and condoms. And to reduce prison populations, if we increased OST in the community and divert drug users from prison, there is a legal obligation to provide medical treatment at the same level in the community as in prison. And I would argue for compassionate release from prison for inmates in the final stages of AIDS. And I would just like to acknowledge my co-authors. Thank you.